Hey guys and girls, Nathan here, and uh, thanks a lot for tuning in for Tuesday Night Chat. So, um, yeah, just wanted to reach out. I'll wait for you guys to hop online uh, before we get started. But lots of things to talk about this week. And, um, yeah, what is happening out there in the world and uh, what is, you know, going on in your neighbourhood. So as we get started... Um, as always, I'll start. I'm going to keep this to one hour square this evening. Um, I will be doing um, about 20 minutes worth of news and other related stuff, talking about what's happening out there in the market, and then be taking your questions and answers. So tonight, if you want to uh, flick your questions over uh, via just text in the message box, I'll revert back to that today. Uh, once again, if you do um, happen to want to text over something to, to hit me up on the hotline, uh, the number is 0426 887 564. It's 0426 887 564. And I'll be taking questions and uh, little notes of things that have, um, you know, if you guys have seen something being inflated away this week or, or going up or something interesting happening out there that you'd like some clarity on, um, feel free to text me over on this number, which once again is 0426 887 and I will get straight into it. So looking at something interesting that I only realised about um, maybe about 48 hours ago, has anyone ever seen this Economist magazine article? This is a front page of The Economist from back in 1988. Um, and it goes on to read, it's got the phoenix uh, that you can see there, which is a bird rising out of the ashes. Uh, it's a bird, uh, you've got the, the fire, you've got the fiat currency that's on fire. Um, and on the front of it, it has this gold chain. Uh, it has like a very interesting gold square chain, which others could call a blockchain. And it goes on to say, 10 Phoenix 2018. Uh, there's a little symbol on there that looks very satanic and occult. Um, but it says 10, 10, Phoenix, 2018, with another one and a zero uh, on there. A lot of people back in the day, uh, in 2018, were significantly sort of saying and alluding to the fact that that could be Bitcoin uh, being a gold block chain, uh, being a block chain around the neck of the Phoenix, uh, rising out of all the uh, fiat currencies. Um, and I, I talked about this back in 2018, when everyone thought Nathan was crazy and um, went on to talk about it significantly, and this is very interestingly, uh, the digits that were on the, the, the Phoenix's necklace, it said 1010 2018. Um, and it's not 1010 like Rack City, it's uh, 1010 Phoenix 2018. And um, looking at the significance of that is that if we go back to what actually occurred on the 10th of October, 2018, you will see that the bond yields in the US bonds uh, dropped and fell off a cliff. And it was only 12 months later that we started to see manipulation of that. Uh, we saw it right at the time, uh, probably around Christmas. It was actually Boxing Day 2018. They started to pump on the printing presses. Uh, they were in a tightening phase uh, for 12, 18 months prior to that. Um, and then they went into the easing phase and they started printing lots and lots of money and here we are in 2020. But um, it's significant, and the reason why I want to bring it up is that I think a lot of people have forgotten about this, but I hadn't. It's actually the day that we launched Birchfeed. Uh, so if you're not on Birchfeed already, I encourage you, it's free. Birchfeed.com, go out there, check it out. Um, subscribe, it's free. It's not gonna cost you anything. If you're a tight ass, it's right up your alley. Uh, if you're looking for you know answers and truths out there, and for questioning, you know, what's happening out there. There's lots of content back dating three to four years in there. I was running it in beta testing before I launched it public uh, back in 2018. So it's actually two year birthday for Birchfeed uh, to the public. And um, two years since the actual GFD occurred. And uh, I think it's significant because I'm gonna dig up some, some charts right here actually, uh, so we can have a look at, but that is when all this came to light and it's been mopped over since February, since January, since February. And um, there's, a, there's an interesting world that's forming out there. And 
I might call it the tale of the two Uber drivers. And uh, going back a little while ago, I got myself a, a new new truck. And um, about three, four weeks ago, someone decided that they'd throw a shopping trolley at it in the shopping center. And uh, it copped two big dents, touch wood. They didn't get any scratches and the dent guys fixed it up. So a shout out to, to Neil from, uh, for, who helped me fix the dents on it today. And um, I went to drop it off, took a couple of hours, perfect, all the dents are gone, cost a couple hundred bucks. And um, yeah, went to the office, called an Uber to the office and there was this guy and he was there and I asked him, like, he goes, oh, sorry, I'm wearing a mask. And he said he hadn't been in driving Uber for a while. Um, said he was financially impacted a little bit, um, but yeah, it, it was cool, right? And then uh, I had to go pick up my car, and I drove to uh, back to the dent removal place. And um, basically, when I went back, there was another Uber driver, and this guy was like, "Please sit in the back, don't touch me, don't look at me." And then this guy was going on like, "Are you okay with Corona and all this sort of stuff?" And uh, he goes, "Look, it's going to be really bad until they come up with a vaccine." And I was like, I don't even want to have a communication with you. And um, yeah, it was just interesting to see, um, you know, the the two different thought processes on the world that we live in. And um, he told me that things were really um, were really bad for him. And um, and you know, I tried to talk to him, but I couldn't make cut through with him. Um, but the guy in the morning was like, you know, we had a bit of a laughter, and and you know, it was the first. It was actually his first client. Uh, since Corona, so he hadn't been driving Uber, so it was random that I got this guy. He'd been on a on a bit of a strike for a period of time, and it was his first ride back. But he wasn't phased about it. The second guy was, and the guy that was concerned about it was telling me how bad his life was, um, you know, his thoughts on the world, and he'd been harboring a lot of, you know, I guess the negative energy out of you know the media. And um, if we look at the the media, it's always negativity and uh you know negative headlines negative stories and a lot of people are buying into it uh, when i picked up my car afterwards i went and saw my mate and uh he had some other cars that were nearby and uh he was stripping some of these cars and he's like man i remember you telling me about the hyperinflation about three years ago and i thought you're off your head and then um he's like right these cars that i'm buying the second hand cars have gone up in value every sort of time he buys a car they're continuously going up in value and he's like man the the like i'm selling engines for what i was paying for the car going back you know a month ago two months ago because of what's happening out there in the marketplace so uh, i guess this time is whatever you want to make of this market whether you want to look at the positives of it or look at the negatives um i, I realized when i was faced with an uber driver who was telling me how bad his life was it did kind of get me down um, and he asked me, like, how are you going? And I was like, oh, you know, things aren't too bad. You know, I had to try and match it because I was like, man, I'm killing. I love life now, right? Like, there's so many cool things that are happening. And um, I guess during this period of time, you can make that decision whether, you know, you can see the light and you can see the energy and you can see the, the positivity out of, you know, the opportunities that sit in front of you or you can see, you know, the negativity. So you know, I made jokes with my mate. Uh, who was stripping the cars i said to him that um yeah i want to go and purchase some cars and dump them in some properties where you know just as a bit of a time capsule i do have a lot of old cars that you know have gone up considerably over the years um but the opportunity you know even cars that used to sell for 50 bucks 100 bucks before and are now selling for like five to ten grand so you can still go and buy those sort of those sort of vehicles out there but what uh, i want to look at is um, this chart which you can't really see it right now and I've screenshotted these charts in the past I posted these into um, Birchfeed the other day but this is a 10-year bond yield I'm going to try and get this on the right angle this is a five-year bill uh, bill rate um, and you can see in 2018 which is in about the middle there that's when the bond market started going down you can look, look it up um, you can look up the three month, the five, five year, the 10 year, the one year, whatever they are. The bond yields were going all the way up until they all started to meet uh, back in um, the start. It was probably about March 2018. And I've made some posts of certain things. And I will post these actually into Birchfeed very shortly when we got off here. 
Um, and I talked about this thing called a, a death cross. And this death cross is when the yields invert from a, a positive yield curve to a negative yield curve, meaning that the younger uh, maturity dates, being the three month, and the 12 month bonds, start paying a higher yield than the, the longer yield curve. Um, and if we look at what happened with the, the, the rates on these charts, which I will post in a birch feed a little bit later, they went negative and the bond yields, the first one up the top um, is 2005 pre-GFC and the red and the green were 2018, 2017 and they were touching at the end and I predicted that this uh, area here would step back and turn into a negative uh, yielding curve line and that is what happened um, at, at, at one uh, extent uh, back in um, the uh, I just saw someone sent me a message I think someone just had a baby so I think one of my nieces just had a baby so I just saw that on my phone uh, gotta go check that out later but um, I saw this occurring and um, that yield curve completely fell off the cliff uh, in and around the 10th of uh, October 2018 so uh, just you know be really mindful of, of that is what uh, occurred back at the time um, and I'll see if I can find some other charts here just to share with you that and I guess my point for like for pointing this out is that there's a lot of signals that indicate new things that are about to occur in uh, in the markets out there so uh, I'm just going to type in there the Dow Jones and this one will be a fun one a lot of people are writing into me asking me why um, are the, the Dow Jones, why are all the stock markets around the world hitting all-time highs, which I'm questioning as well. Why do we have all these insolvent companies hitting all-time highs? So if we look back here, this is um, the, the, the market back from 2018. We started to see, we saw the market run all the way up. Uh, we can see it running up from here. I'll post it in the Birch feed a little bit later. Whoops, I don't know why that opened up. But the market topped out in 2017 and bounce, 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 and couldn't move off from there. Um, so there's lots of data that is, um, um, which is, you know, really interesting to see in the market. So I guess, you know, for me, I'm seeing this time as being one of the greatest opportunities to be alive. Um, we've got a convergence of, you know, you can sit there and be like the Uber driver that was like really negative about life and, you know, talking about how everything's bad and fearing his life, having to put a mask on and, you know, all that sort of stuff. But the first Uber driver, he was really excited about what was there and, and we had a good old chat. So, you know, you can live in fear, you can live in uncertainty, or you can look for the, sim, like the, the, the signs that are out there and uh, you know, sort of take advantage of the opportunities that are in, out there in the market. I was looking at this chart as well the other day, and this is um, this one here is the 10-year US Treasury bond, and I did post this one in Birchfield already. Um, it's from, that red line that I posted on there is from 1980, and that is when the dollar started its downward um, decline. Uh, that is 10 years after uh, the US dollar was created in 1971 and um, from that um, that coincidentally coincided with the Hunt Brothers and the uh, highest uh, price that silver ever went to which is $50 US back in 1980. So it was really interesting to see that they blamed a silver market hitting an all-time high being cornered market from the Hunt Brothers who pushed the price up allegedly um, and then ever since then We've seen the price of silver be manipulated downwards, and if we looked at it indexed to inflation, uh, it would be much less than what it was back in the 1980s, as well as the fact that the currency has been continuously dying uh, from that point. So it was just something else that I'd seen the other day. The reason why uh, I looked at that is because there's some inflation that is occurring out there in the market. So I'm going to read my first article uh, from today, um, which goes on to say, the US Mint is hiking silver prices and will charge $67 for one uh, one ounce uncirculated American silver eagle coin starting Tuesday, October the 13th. So here we are 
looking at the silver market and I had some nice uh, people ask me uh, from you know different areas of the government um, why I certainly made a, a comment about an ETF being a, a scam, uh, which is my personal opinion, of course, and as all these things are that always say, they are personal opinions. Um, my viewpoint and why I don't buy paper contracts and paper assets is due to the fact that you can't go and purchase a lot of these things to the price that they show uh, in the futures market. So if we look at you know, the price of spot price of silver, for example, in the US, it's trading at sort of 25 bucks roughly at the moment. But go find me some silver for $25. Go find me a barrel of oil at around you know 80, uh, around 30 bucks or 40 bucks, whatever it's trading for today. Uh, these things are not occurring out there. So here we are starting to see the US Mint print out new money, which is uh, just bullion grade sort of silver. Um, price of products containing silver, which will cha effectively change October 13th, 2020, resetting silver prices is necessary. No inflation heart. This is from Silver Doctors. So I posted this into Birchfeed the other day as well. Um, so this article here is, this is a, a, a Twitter post. Uh, it is from the actual um, US Mint. And it says, the, US, the United States Mint recently adopted a new strategy for pricing products in silver and pneumostatic products portfolio. Price of all products containing silver effectively changed October 13, 2020, applicable to all silver products already on sale and those yet to be released. In order for the U.S. states Mint to cover rising costs to meet its fiduciary responsibility to operate at no net cost to taxpayers and return money to the Treasury General Fund, resetting silver prices is necessary. And then, um, yeah, this goes on with all different links to different areas of the government uh, entity. And he goes, that's $67 for each uncirculated silver eagle. Notice that while these coins are one step above, for example, the tubes of eagles, they are not necessarily a coin that uh, one could think of as numismatic. Uh, I'd call them a semi-numismatic, but hey, the US Mint is hiking prices at almost 25% on the uncirculated silver eagle alone. And the US Mint can't really afford to cheap out now, can they? The five ounce on circulated anyway. Uh, go check out the article. But there we go. We've got silver coming out at the US Mint at a higher price than what it ever has uh, before. I have a question as well. Um, and this goes to everybody. Um, and one of the things also, uh, I've spoken, I think I've spoken to like five people or six people from Melbourne in the last sort of uh, 24 hours, 48 hours. Um, and one thing that I've realized is that you guys in Victoria, <laughs> we're questioning things, right? A lot of people don't question the world that they live in. A lot of people don't question it until they're put in a position which is very uncomfortable, and then you have to start to question these things. So, you know, just a shout out to everyone in Melbourne. Um, you know, I'm hearing things that are out there that, you know, they're still in lockdown and it's getting worse and all this sort of stuff. Um, I had a thought after I spoke to someone uh, yesterday, and that is, why does not our Crime Minister, Mr. Scamo, uh, come out and step in, because he's meant to be the Prime Minister of Australia, should he not be, um, why is he not coming out to help out all those in Victoria and, uh, you know, say, look, this is an on, we're going to stop this, we're going to step, step in and uh, help all these people in Victoria. And I don't have the answer for that, uh, but I find it very interesting. Why do we have we have these people in power? Everyone looks up to them and obeys them without questioning. Uh, but I think it's important for people to start questioning, you know, who are these people? Who do they work for? And why aren't they, you know, helping me out in my rights or whatever at the at the certain time? So that's something, you know, who does the Prime Minister work for, right? Uh, is not... Melbourne, a part of Australia, is Melbourne not, uh, you know, got taxpaying citizens which are a part of Australia? Um, they're questions to be asking. If you're asking my personal opinion, which I will get to on my next um, article that I want to read out to you, uh, this is uh, directly from the RBA website, and it's something that I've shown uh, quite some while ago um, in uh, in my mentoring program. So I've just had pop-ups hop on my screen here on my computer and they won't just appear. It's like a wheel of death, so I'm worried that we'll uh, have an interference to our life. But um, this is straight off the RBA website. I'm literally on the RBA website as I read this to you. Um, so if you want to go to the rba.gov, 
www.ac.au website and read with me or check it out later. Um, I'll go to the top right hand corner, go down to In About Us and click on the top one which is Our Role. And I'll read this to you and find out what is interesting in here, if anything stands out uh, to you guys. For some reason, my computer's heating up a lot here. Um, <coughs> the Reserve Bank of Australia is Australia's central bank and derives its functions and powers from the Reserve Bank Act of 1959. Uh, its duty is to contribute to the stability of the currency, full employment and economic prosperity and welfare of the Australian people. Okay, pop-up disappeared. That's good. Um, uh, it does this by conducting monetary policy to meet an agreed medium-term inflation target working to maintain strong financial system and efficient payment system and issuing the nation's banknotes. Why does it say payment system? I don't know if that's really always been there. But this is the most notable part of their about us section. The RBA provides certain banking services as required. Right? So just think about words, right? Like these are lawyers. These are very, very smart legal individuals who put together this website. It goes and read, the RBA provides certain banking services as required to the Australian government, and the Australian government is in uh, capital letters, uh, to the Australian government and its agencies to do a number, uh, and to a number of overseas central banks and official institutions. Additionally, it manages Australia's gold and foreign exchange reserves. So if you go back and read this, and there's a really important line here. The RBA provides certain banking services as required to the Australian government. So think about this, right? If I'm Nathan Birch, I wouldn't be providing services to myself because I am myself, right? Just think about that one for a moment. Uh, they provide certain banking services as required to the Australian government. So is it the Australian government or is it not? And its agencies. So is it an agency? No, because it wouldn't be referring itself to one. So who actually controls these organisations? And who has this three-sided sort of logo as their logo, which looks a bit weird, doesn't it? I just like the question, who controls who here? So getting on to who as well, um, you know, there is some news that came out today uh, and this is just on news.com and it goes on to read coronavirus WHO backflips on virus stance by condemning lockdowns the World Health Organization has backflipped on its original certain word stance after calling for world leaders to stop locking down their countries and economies doctor whoever from who uh, appealed to world leaders yesterday telling them to stop using lockdowns as your primary control of method of the said illness. He also claimed that the only thing lockdowns achieved was poverty with no mention of the potential life saved. Right? So I haven't seen anywhere in the news that says go and get a good healthy immune system. I haven't seen anywhere in the news to say go get good gut health, go and you know eat organic food, um, you know try and build up your immune system all that sort of stuff. Uh, we have seen these organisations tell you to you know, do certain things. Now that we've got a crashed economy all around the world, we've got a global financial depression, which is what we had prior to February this year, which started back two years ago in the 10th of October 2018. And now when you talk to people and they tell you about how bad things are, they're like, oh, you know, we've got an economic depression, we've got all these bad things happening because of said virus, it's like they are mopping the floor now with the said virus. So it's coming out of their own mouths to say that they are causing a depression with this. Just interesting. Um, one last thing I wanted to share with you, uh, it is a link, I'm unsure if I posted this one in Birchfeet, actually I did, I did post this one in Birchfeet today. And I posted a list of historical currencies. And this is just the different nations where the currencies had come from. And then under each one, it had all different types of currencies that had been, um, you know, sort of in circulation. And you can go and read about these things because a lot of people, you know, don't know much about currencies. And 
you got to learn somewhere and you know we've got all these currencies which are probably hundreds here but there's literally thousands and ten, tens of thousands of currencies that have occurred throughout history which have all turned to zero so what would it mean if we put an extra currency on that list and called it the dollar that you know rest in peace uh, to that currency and we're certainly starting to see that um, looking at uh, some of the inflation that's occurring out there in the marketplace um, there's some articles that I'd like to share with you uh, inflation soars to eight months high in September uh, in August in negative zone um, so here we are looking at all the oh, this one's got a paywall on it I was reading it beforehand before it went to a paywall um, here we are looking at you know all the inflation targets right so these organizations which are saying you know inflation we've got to keep it at a certain range and we're trying to keep it you know get it up to about two percent tell me you know what's happened to your grocery bill in 2020 what's happened to your food at mcdonald's what's happened to your food wherever you've been what's happened to the price of any of your necessities have they gone up or down or are they the same and it would be interesting to hear you know what you know you guys are seeing uh, at this point uh, in your own sort of world um, but looking at a lot of the ways of which I posted a video in the birch feed earlier on um, which was from Lynette Zhang um, at ITM traders in the US and they were talking about how they're actually valuing uh, inflation over there so beforehand they could say meat prices so your meat prices would be a nice piece of steak or a leg of lamb or whatever the case may be now they've basically turned it down to sausages right they're saying oh you know sausages haven't gone up in in price but you know is it the cost that's risen or has it been you know the fact that they've reduced the quality of the goods uh, giving you a lesser serving whatever the case may be so just some interesting things to see uh, out there so um, one of the last articles that i've got before i get into tonight's uh, main topic which is you know what's happening in the property markets and what's happening in the financial markets besides this uh, federal reserves inflation target uh, target fudge what it means for australians now late last week the chairman of the u.s central bank announced major changes to the way the u.s will be targeting inflation in the coming years instead of trying to keep inflation around two percent by lowering or raising interest rates uh, fed fed chairman uh, jerome powell said the u.s central bank might let things run a bit hot for a while as the US economy bounces back from coronavirus. That means the US interest rates are likely to stay around zero for years, even as the economy rebounds. Of course, because the, the dollar is dead, right? It's dying. Um, it sounds pretty wonkish, but the decision is going to have real-world effects on Australian households. Some are already happening. The high Aussie dollar was not too high. The most obvious impact is Australian dollars. Since last week's announcement, Aussie dollar has strengthened a bit, continuing its remarkable turnaround since its recent low of 55 cents in late March. Um, uh, interest rates and house prices, uh, which is going to be quite fun for us to talk about. Everything's being inflated, right? They're saying that we're like a negative 0.3 of a percent, so it's less than 1% negative. Um, so it's negative 0.3 of a percent, 30% of 1% negative. Um, but if this is what we're seeing in the current market when we have, you know, you know allegedly inflation and a negative effect, uh, what will it look like when we start seeing real inflation, like 2% or maybe 10 times the amount of you know inflation of where we're at at the moment and what i think we will start to see is um you know larger price increases and larger price rises in certain um you know things that we purchase on a day-to-day -day basis so whether it be clothes whether it be you know any sort of gadget or doodad or or whatever a second in car a part for your car uh, a push bike um, a set of dun dumbbells you know these things are going up dramatically and they're saying that there is no inflation in the current market so just a bit of food for thought guys now getting on to the fun part of tonight if you do have any questions flick them into the the thread um, or send me a message on this phone uh, i can see a couple of you guys have done that already this evening just once again this phone number that i hold in my hand just to uh, you know take notes from you guys uh, phone number here is 0426 887 564. Flick over any questions or, or that that you may have. Um, actually, someone sent me last week um, um, 
about inflation, which I didn't see until just now. Uh, frozen blueberries at Audi uh, are now 300 grams instead of 500 grams. It seems cheaper, but it's not. It's 9.97 per kilo compared to $7.38 per kilo. Frozen blueberries used to be the same price per kilo with the frozen mixed berries and raspberries. So, you know, whether it comes to your food or whatever it comes to, it is, um, you know, a, a lot of inflation that's happening out there. So, um, firstly, uh, he had been invested. Um, keep keep them coming through. I'm seeing your little notes here, guys. Um, at Be Invested at my head office, um, we have been in unprecedented sort of growth in uh, in 2020. We've been doing really well during this time. Uh, some people are doing well. Uh, some people, are, you know, taking advantage of the opportunities that are out there and, and seeing things that are happening. Um, we're in the process of recruiting uh, 15. Uh, I can't even give you, you know, three hands, right? You go five, five, five. All right, we've got 15 uh, jobs available at the moment. Now you can go to seek dot com uh, there is all different jobs in all different areas of uh, of business um, to be able to um, I just realize that I need to disappear for a second and plug my laptop charger in because it is going to die on us saved <laughs> um, so yeah um, if you are looking for a job uh, if you have found yourself unemployed uh, if you don't like where you're working for, uh, if you do like, you know, I constantly have a lot of people ask me, Nathan, I'd like to be a part of your organization. I'd like to be a part of your business. How could I get involved? How can I, can I come work for you? Whatever. Um, 15 new jobs uh, at Be Invested. I employ about 100 uh, staff nationally for all different roles in all different businesses in all different walks of life, ranging from, you know, lawyers to accountants to uh, finance people. Uh, to uh, you know, customer service people, property management, uh, financial planners, and all that sort of stuff. So um, check out on seek.com. Just go to seek, type in be invested. You will find a link to um, yeah, our job ads that are out there uh, looking to grow and expand the team throughout this year. So with that, that is one cool thing that's happening around our neighborhood. Um, looking at what is happening out there in the property market. So it's been a while since they've given a pure sort of property market update. Um, I saw some beforehand wrote on Instagram, uh, what do I think will happen in the Melbourne market and what do I see happening nationally? Um, Melbourne, I've never really been the biggest fan of Melbourne, so no offense to all my friends down there in Melbourne. Um, I um, Do I think the market's gonna crash? No, uh, I think there's still upside in the market, yes. Um, do I buy in Melbourne? No. Uh, the reason why I don't is that uh, I, I do occasionally, like very, very rarely, uh, do I buy in Melbourne. Um, but when I do, it's very severely discounted. So I'm negotiating on one big deal at the moment, which is an offer developer in Melbourne, uh, which may come to fruition, may not. Um, but in the Melbourne market, you know, you guys can just drive down the road five minutes. You're not bound by any boundary. So you can drive down the road and go, oh, he looks like a new area. We can go and build a new subdivision. You've got flat land all the way from Melbourne CBD all the way out uh, to Albury and the borderline of New South Wales. So as for Sydney, I like Sydney because you're bound by sort of national parks and you know it's confined into the Sydney Basin and a lot more opportunity, especially seeing Sydney as being the doormat to the country. So uh, what am I seeing in Sydney at the moment? Um, the market's are pretty hot. There's a lack of stock in some areas. I'm seeing sort of like a west, a northwest, um, southwest. There's some markets which are doing really incredibly well, and there's some markets that are just doing okay. As for the inner city sort of areas and locations, uh, that is not something that I'm, you know, always active. And I've picked up a few uh, really cool deals, which I'll talk about shortly. Actually, I'll talk about them right now. Um, I picked up a deal probably three months ago, um, which uh, no, actually the deal I started negotiating in January this year, it settled about a month ago and it was in Botany. Uh, so it's like right next to the airport. I uh, picked up properties there for 390 to 535. Um, and they re rebate a day after settlement for 165 grand more for our investors. So it was a good opportunity in there. 
Um, is there activity out there in, the, in those markets? Yes, there is. There's still activity out there. Um, you know, is there? It's, it's a very you know cautious sort of market out there in the market. So, uh, purchasing properties which are you know low risk with good upside. Um, some markets are doing hot, as I was saying. Uh, if we look in Northwest Sydney, some of like the acreage markets, there's nothing around. Um, if we look at you know all the first homeowner areas, nothing around. If we look at the new property market, there's nothing really around. If we look at like that middle class sort of area, the white collar worker, uh, those markets around that sort of 800 to one and a half million dollar price points, um, you know, they're quite active sort of markets at the moment. The lower end of town, uh, there's some opportunities out there. You can pick up stuff. The cheapest property I've bought in Sydney uh, this year is uh, 229,000, which went through about two weeks ago for someone. Uh, 229 for property in Sydney, like in Sydney, Sydney. Um, we just bought a property, uh, a bulk deal it was off market in Parramatta uh, for 290,000, um, you know, which was a really cool deal. Um, and that that has all gone through now. Um, so activity is still out there, good opportunities in the market. There is a bit of demand, quite a bit of demand, um, you know, of, of cheaper stock. So always look at, you know, minimizing that downside risk with the most upside potential. If you look in Queensland, uh, every time I hop on the Facebook uh, or Instagram, I look at what my mates up to or something, I just see stuff in the stories, I log in every few days. Um, I'm seeing people post stuff and they're like, we've moved to Queensland, moved to the Gold Coast, moved to Brisbane. Um, as you guys are aware, I've been very bullish on these markets over the last few years. And I said that when we see uh, quantitative easing, I never would have thought that we'd see people moving to Queensland like this. But um, yeah, I had a lot of confidence in that market and the market's performing very well. And there was a bit of a boom occurring in that Southeast Queensland corridor, anywhere from even Tweed Heads, uh, Byron Bay on the sort of south side of the border, all the way up to the Sunshine Coast, a lot of activity happening there and all the way through the coast as well. Um, I'm finding that you can still pick up properties uh, in Brisbane, uh, they're getting harder and harder to get for 150 grand rent for 250 per week. A lot of people are moving from other sort of markets. Um, you know, if you think about the share market, uh, there's a, there's not many dividend paying stocks out there. Uh, people are looking for somewhere to get yields from. So I think that is a part of our competition in the marketplace. The other part of the competition is there's a lot of people out there with a lot more money now from currency creation and money printing. Um, so that money is finding itself into a home uh, and being at the lower end, there's always a sort of um, demand there to push up that market. Now, if we fly around to the rest of the country, Northern Territory, not exposed in that market at all. Um, if we look at Perth and, and Adelaide, those markets are chugging along. There's some very good opportunities out in those regions. Uh, I have seen you know, properties that have picked up around the country for sort of 50 grand and 80 grand and 70 grand and 90 grand. Things that used to sell for two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000, picking up for 50, 60, 70,000 in 2020. Um, there is actually one suburb, there's actually one suburb in the country which I went to twice in the end of 2019 and they, in that place uh, I picked up properties for my investors at around $60,000 to $70,000 each. Now it is impossible to find anything under one hundred and fifty. dollars On a good day if you can find a cheapie it's probably about one twenty, one ten dollars to buy in this location. So the market has literally doubled in 2020 in this one place. So um, yeah, it's just interesting to see there is some markets that are really booming. A lot of mining uh, areas are booming at the moment. I've always been very conservative about buying in mining towns. Um, but you know, when things are next to nothing, then you know, opportunities may uh, show their head. And uh, mining towns have been something that I've been personally uh, picking up for the last sort of two or three years. I don't talk about them that often uh, because I don't want to create competition. Uh, but we went in stealth mode and picked up whilst everyone was scared. So that's something we've been able to do for our investors uh, before we started seeing everybody go to commodities and you know, commodity-based markets increasing. So yeah, um, is there you know a boom? Is there a crash? Everyone was expecting this big crash to occur. Uh, we've seen some of those loan pauses stopping. Uh, we've seen JobKeeper extended. We're just seeing more and more money printing out there and nothing is happening to the markets. Uh, if anything, since around March this year, uh, I've seen in the sub sort of two to th uh, sub three to four hundred thousand dollar markets increasing a pent up of demand of buyers. 
um, you know, properties that are below replacement cost. As we start seeing inflation occur in building, new properties and new dwellings that will need to be built uh, will become more expensive uh, as materials and cost of goods go up. And uh, obviously that will naturally impact the rest of the market because people will be like, why am I going to spend so much for a new property when I can buy a second-hand uh, sort of established property for that sort of uh, price range like for much cheaper and uh, that's what I believe will be a bit of a vortex to suck up that market so uh, very much so in the bread and butter sort of market in the low end of town when it comes to property um, you know those opportunities I wish the markets would fall I want I'm the biggest fan for a market crash I would love to see a market crash however unfortunately uh, the property markets in those areas are you know very stable and in quite a lot of circumstances increasing so it is making uh, my life more difficult for purchasing properties and assets on behalf of my investors so that's just something i'm seeing out there uh, on the ground as for the amounts of sort of properties and, and whatnot I'm, I'm purchasing um, i'm probably one of the largest property buyers in the country uh, we secure about 100 properties per month on behalf of our investors um, so yeah looking at you know exposure in the market and the amount of agents that I speak with and, and market data that I get on a day-to-day -day basis uh, I'm exposed to a lot of things out there in the market I'm seeing these things so this is me reporting sort of like real information from on the on the ground and not you know just some statistical data statistical data can be manipulated in any way shape or format that you wish it to be um, so yeah looking at it markets are very hot out there where will they go to well you know we've all got to question ourselves what will be influencing the market as i've been talking about for many years i said that we'd see a market crash uh, back in the late 2016 uh, early 2017 due to the fact that the banks the central banks policy makers and our you know the bosses of all the, the allegedly uh, you know market makers out there being the prime ministers and everyone who do they work for they are the central banks and you know we've got to look at the policies of where monetary policy is flowing we've seen interest rates come down uh, over the course of the last 12 months uh, probably about 80 percent interest rates have come down at the central bank uh, we are on the eve of them going into negative interest rates we will see negative interest rates it's a matter of when not if um, we're at a point where we're about to see in early to 2021 we're going to see uh, monetary policy uh, relax so it's going to be very loose monetary policy a lot of people being able to access cheap uh, available credit out there uh, so what will it mean when we start seeing more cheap more available more readily accessible sort of credit it will mean that people will be taking advantage of the opportunities getting as much credit as they can to go and purchase assets which will push a fire crack in the bottom of the market and push that up so uh, is all lost i've been purchasing properties every year uh, since i signed a contract back in 2003 so sort of 17 years on I'm still buying properties and I've been able to find and navigate sort of opportunities throughout every single year even through those times where I said the market could be you know going backwards or still purchasing and still being able to find and negotiate sort of bargains so you know what is your you know story going to be at the end of this as I said at the start of tonight I had two Uber drivers today and one that took me to my office and one took me back to my car and uh, the one that took me back, it was really depressing. I was like, I can't even talk to this bloke, right? I'm happy as fucking pig and shit. And this guy here is depressed as fuck. And it's like, this guy has the same opportunity as the other 25 million people in the country. How many people are going to be excited and how, people, how many people aren't? And I don't mean being excited by being flippant. I'm being excited because you understand how the game is being played and where the opportunities lay within this market. So I was thinking, um, you know, it's been a good sort of six months since this pandemic came out. Um, just look at a few of my investors. I'm not going to go in there and talk about their positions in the detail. I'm not going to talk about, you know, um, their names or anything like that. Just, you know, from a high level, some of the sort of things that people are doing and some of the moves that people are making within the current market. So as I said beforehand, some properties, some cheap properties have been purchasing, uh, whether they be in um, in you know, Sydney, in Brisbane, interstate, many different states, uh, whether it be regional, whether it be mining. Um, you know, as I said beforehand, I did touch on mining. I'm not a mining guy and I'm always anti-mining, but I do see opportunities and I have seen them. Uh, will those opportunities persist? I don't think so, right? The, the days are numbered for mining and I will be exiting 
not exiting by selling, but exiting by not partaking in the boom that is starting to occur in some of those locations. So um, one of the deals that came across my desk uh, today, uh, $70,000 for a three bedroom unit. So 70 grand for a three bedroom unit. Uh, I just bought a Ford Ranger Raptor. It's a nice car, really cool. Um, I paid 74 grand. So I could have bought a, a car for 74 grand or I could have bought a, um, a, a, a unit for 70 grand. The thing with this unit is that it sold, that these things were selling in the same complex, identical to it, uh, going back five, six years ago for five, six hundred thousand dollars. So we're picking it up for like, you know, 10, 15 percent of what it was selling for in the past, renting for three hundred dollars per week. So it's a, it's a juicy sort of cash flow. Um, it's not suitable for everybody. Um, however, um, you know, these things used to rent for 15, 1600 bucks a week. So if there is a bit of a swing in this market, um, you know, and the rents did go from 300 bucks a week to, um, to sort of 1800 or 1500 or $1,200 per week, and we see people taking and snapping this market up and all the suckers coming in ready to get slaughtered, it would be a good asset that you could take from the bottom of the market with down, minimal dis downside risk. You can go buy yourself a, a new Ford Ute pickup truck or you can go find yourself a, uh, a three bedroom property which rents for 300 bucks a week in the crap market and you know, has the potential and upside to go to 1500 bucks per week. Um, you know, what are these deals looking like? Um, I've got someone, um, someone that, some of these are like really proud sort of stories and um, you know, I'm really excited and I, I, I get you know, a big kick out of being able to help and, and serve the community, you guys, um, by helping you guys on your journey and you guys having confidence and trust and, and faith in myself and, and my team. Like last week, you saw a few of my team. I've got all different teams, all different people. As I said, I've got about 100 staff that I employ and um, am looking to employ 15 new staff in the middle of a depression. So this is not a recession. Let's get it right. It is a depression and uh, you know, looking to grow the team. And um, you know the stories that I see out there and the, the reason why you know, I get so passionate about what I do is seeing the cool things that come in. So uh, I'm very, uh, say intimate, but that sounds a bit weird. I'm sort of like, I am intimate to their portfolio, like all my investors' portfolio. So I run my office like a, a family office and, and help them build wealth through property investing. Um, and I see everybody's journey, so I work very closely with them to help them sort of reach their goals. And you know, I get proud, I get inspired by seeing people overcome their, their mindset and the obstacles that come in life. So it's, it's some really cool, touching stories out there. So I've got one, uh, one couple bought one property sort of like eight years ago, had a personal issue which they couldn't purchase anymore uh, for a while. And uh, just only recently, about a month or two ago, uh, they went out and purchased, I think it was four four new properties so I went from one to five properties uh, in a month they were sitting there not able to do something for a period of time and go look we're ready to pull the, the trigger and we're able to uh, sort of do some real, really cool stuff um, we got one guy who came to us recently uh, he had 25 grand savings and goes I want to get a portfolio, portfolio built uh, he bought a property two days after settlement uh, he had 25 grand bought a property uh, it was, I think it was about 80 grand, 90 grand. Two days after settlement, he was able to pull out 45 grand, go and buy another property, which is about to settle, and I think we can probably pull out sort of 50 to 100 grand on it. So these things are not things that I say we can always do, so don't go, I want that what he got. Uh, everybody's position is different, and you know, once again, I don't give financial advice on these sort of things either. Um, I've got more people in 2020 which have been able to um, you know, go from um, you know one property to sort of five or six this year than any other time in history of the business, and it's not due to the fact that you know our business has grown and we're getting bigger and all that sort of stuff. It's just people's ability to take advantage of opportunities uh, in this market and in these times. They're educated, they're knowledgeable, they're seeing you know the opportunities that present themselves in front of you know in front of them today, and that's what's really cool. A lot of the improvements that I've been seeing uh, with my investors have mainly been sort of mindset shifts and the ability to sort of yeah uh, change their change their mindset and grow 
And these things aren't things that happen overnight. They might happen you know, over a period of a couple of months or a year or, or two years or three years or five years. So, you know, it's constant improvement on yourself. So, you know, look within like don't, you know, beat yourself up because you're not where you want to be. There's opportunities that, you know, are always out in the market. And um, as I said, you know, beforehand, uh, picked up some really cool bargains in Sydney in each state, right? Like picking up really, really well-priced properties. People, there's people that are really scared, like that Uber driver that, uh, that that was fearful. And there's lots of people that are opportunistic. I'm sitting in there, I'm like, do you want to sell your Uber, man? Like, I'll buy your car. They're going up by the week, right? Why are you sitting there just being dragged down by the negativity that's out there? There's times where you go, okay, cool, I'm not partaking in this market. As I was saying, um, you know, there's certain markets where I'll never partake in. And sometimes I'll jump in there, do a little stint and get back out. Um, and you know it, it's it's you know do you want to you know are you taking advantage of the opportunities you can you know sort of lock yourself down and go oh, the world's fucked and everything's really bad or you can be you know improving yourself whether it be what you're eating or hey exercising or anything like that recently just a fun fact hold me accountable every week I bought myself some some weights I didn't have time to go to the gym so I got weights and dumbbells and barbells and all that sort of stuff so uh, I think if I, you know, pump out some some weight, I'll be built, right? So it'll be cool. But um, you know, what can we improve ourselves on a regular basis? Um, someone else came to me at the start of the year. Uh, spoke to me. Had I think about seventy thousand uh, dollars. Now I've got five properties, five properties of seventy G. Uh, purchased two, pulled out equity, bought another two, pulled out equity, bought another one, and you know, got to re reassess constantly as where we're at and what we need to do to get on the next leg of the journey so you know if we're going to see a property boom in 2021 which i believe we're going to see and uh, we'll see more liquidity being printed when we see the uh, the cost of money becoming cheaper uh, and more people wanting to be able to get you know returns uh, which they can't get in other traditional sort of markets then you know what are you going to be taking through that market if we're to see a property boom tomorrow do you have your cargo ready if we're going to see a property market boom, um, you know, would you want to see five hundred grand double to a million dollars, or would you want to see, you know, five million dollars double to ten million dollars? Um, you know, what is your position looking like? What can you do to improve your position? How can you get yourself fit? Um, you know, to take on that market. How's your finance structure? How's your finance looking? Um, I was sitting with someone yesterday, one of my investors for many years, um, and he's a, he's a really good guy, really, really good guy. I've known him for about 10 years now, and um, caught up with him. I said, let's look at your portfolio. He's getting on. I'm like, what do we need to do? Shape it up so you can retire. And uh, he came in the office and sitting down, and I was like, I thought we'll catch up next week. And when I was sitting there, I was like, tell me what's happening with the interest rates. And he goes, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so a conversation began as like where are we at and then I sent him home with a big list of homework what he needs to do because he hadn't looked at his interest rates he hadn't looked at a few things for a while and I believe that we can sort of carve out some some rates for him and uh, maybe save save himself sort of like twenty thirty thousand uh, dollars per year um, on on interest and if you could save 20 grand a year on interest would that help you you know take back one day a week at work would it help you be able to you know restructure your life so having that that portfolio and that position sort of helps you get to the next leg of your journey so it doesn't matter whether you've got a portfolio we haven't got a portfolio there's always something you can be doing what can we do with your rents can we push the rents up um, I was looking I was actually in a management meeting with my um, senior management today and I was talking to Michelle from from Queensland and it's like I'm looking forward to the properties that are becoming vacant because uh, we can push the rents up and we're getting good rents at the moment in the market up in Queensland. So what have you done in the last six months, right? This is it's nearly the end of 2020, right? Most people are being fearful. They've been brainwashed from the media and all that sort of stuff. What have you done in 2020, right? How has your year panned out for you? Um, and I will touch more on this sort of next week because I'm going to get to your questions now as we've only got sort of five, ten minutes left. Um, but what have you done? What can you be doing? Are you just going to sit here and let uh, the best opportunity? I will never let a crisis go to waste. A crisis is amazing. Um, last week we had the budget. I did my budget chat. If you haven't seen it, go check out the budget chat. I had a, an interview with Ridwan Hannon from One Path Accountants with me uh, in the office. We talked about 
you know, the budget and it wasn't a traditional budget. I couldn't stop laughing. I was smiling. I was like, this is amazing. We've got so many, uh, so much debt. The world is a wash of debt. They just have to keep printing money to keep this Ponzi scheme alive. We're in a debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme bubble. And it's going to pop. You know, everything's going to get popped. Doesn't matter if you've got a house, a, a $200 car, you know, everything is going up in value in this period of time. And seeing the levels of debt, um, you yeah, know, I'm talking to people and they're like, oh, you know, there are people that don't know me and that aren't a part of this community. They might be someone down at the, the shops or, or wherever. They turn around and they're like, oh, you know, the kids are going to be in debt and our grandkids are going to be in debt and all this sort of stuff. I just love it, right? Load us up with debt. Load the nation up with debt. Bankrupt the nation. Bankrupt all the nations, right? Kill our currency. What is the opportunity within that? Because once one thing dies, where can we take that through to the other side? And no lie should get to the other side and no dirty scheme should get to the other side. And that is where, you know, if you have the opportunities with, you know, how you protect yourself and set yourself up on this side, it doesn't get taken into the new paradigm. So could you leave you know your debt and you know debt and death on this side um when i say debt and death your your debt is a death contract right and it's it's something that everybody's stuck to debt so if we're going to see this debt get inflated away the only way for us to survive this is to see the debt get inflated away debt becomes relevant with inflation um, and they're showing their hand right the hand has been shown they're just going to print their way through this so yeah, on that side, what are you doing at this point in time? Uh, next week when I catch up, I'll be talking about, um, let, let's talk about what have you done for this year. Let's talk about a bit about goal planning. Maybe what about we can do next year as well. So I'm open to you guys with the community. You guys have any topics or anything specific you want me to talk about? Happy to chat about it next week. So flick us a message on that. Going to read through a few of your questions. I've uh, got Michelle here. Um, Sid, thanks for posting up that phone number. Tracy from New Zealand. We've just gone uh, below 2% interest for one year fixed. Uh, there's so many banks at the start of this year, there was no banks that were under 2%. Now in Australia, we've got lots and lots of banks which are under 2%. It is amazing, right? Who would have thought? I remember when people said, Nathan, you know, you're off your head. Interest rates aren't going to go down. You may want them to go down, but you're going to go bankrupt because house because interest rates are going to go up and house prices are going to crash. And I was like, I laughed, right? I laughed, and I was like, interest rates are not going up; they're going down, and they went down. And uh, here we are, the sub two percent, and I believe we'll see low one percent uh, over the course of 2021. So let's see uh, what is happening out there. So uh, we've got Gemma. Hey guys, awesome to see all my lovely clients tuning in. Uh, it, it, thanks for hopping on, Gemma. I see a lot of my team here in here as well, so um, reach out to everyone. Lisa, hey Nathan, we settled on uh, today on property number six. Thank you so much for the great work you do and the Be Invested in Zinger. You guys are amazing. Now working on number seven. You are, and you've almost got number seven settling shortly. So a big um, sort of shout out there to Lisa. Good work, and it's awesome. Like it's. It's humbling seeing the stories and seeing what people are doing out there in the community and the, the goals that they're kicking. So Lisa, uh, really awesome. And uh, you know, I think gold price, I think silver price is 30, $35 and uh, something cents today. So just FYI, um, little running joke between us. Uh, Mahesh, someone else is kicking ass over there. Mahesh, good, good work as well. Um, uh, hands up, who's loving Birch Feed from Gemma? Now, if you guys are not on Birch Feed, just do yourself a favor. If you don't like it, you can delete it. Uh, some people say that they don't like it because it makes lots of noises throughout the night. You can mute it, you can change your notification settings. Uh, you know, if you do like what you're seeing uh, on Birch Feed, um, yeah, give a shout out for it as well. Um, and I just want to say a bit of gratitude as well for everyone that has been writing in really cool reviews for us over in Google. Uh, really humbled for, the, um, for the, the comments and the love that's out there. If you are liking these feeds, uh, you know, it does take a lot to be here every week to do these videos and to think of the content and, and provide you with information. If you do like it, if you could just give a bit of love, go over to Google, give us a review, let us know what you're liking about and what you've learned and what you've been able to apply to your life from these videos. Um, 
Uh, Michelle, please email if you need an agent in Queensland. We'll look after you. Um, they corruption all around us, 100%. Um, we know who Dan works for. Uh, our friends on Instagram have, have gone for the evening. Um, actually, I might go check my my message. Um, oh, wow. No, I didn't have a little niece or nephew. It was just a note about that. So, yeah, my, my niece is having a baby shortly. Oh, me and my nephew and his, his wife. Um, it's actually interesting that I was talking, how freak is this, right? The day that Birch Feed got launched live uh, was actually my nephew's wedding back in the, the it was the, the 11th, 10th, 11th of, of October, two years ago. It was the day before his wedding that Birch Feed got launched. Um, so yeah, and they just texted me and they're having a baby. So how cool is that? Uh, this is exactly what I've been saying for weeks. I work in a major shopping center and many businesses are not reopening. There are going to be a lot of empty shops out there, a lot of um, you know holes that are going to occur. There's going to be a lot of seats that are not filled um, and have disappeared. It's like we're playing musical chairs and the music is still on. The lights are off. What will happen once the music stops and uh, they're not going to be able to stop the music right if everyone keeps walking around playing musical chairs they're not going to realize that there's no seats there so you know, that is the veil that's being uh, put over our face at this point in time um yeah we all know who is working for who uh, no play on words and uh, there's lots of more vested interest if we think that our politicians are politicians i'm politically atheist um, the reason being is that they're all commies and um, you know no offense to anyone out there but you know I believe that there's high levels of control and high levels of power and we can tell that right and if the biggest thing that you could have taken from 2020 is that you know we've been able to awaken ourselves to the fact to question things that we're not so brainwashed and indoctrinated in the TV channels out there and the media out there that sort of tell us um, you know, the, 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 a lie that we're to be living. Um, <laughs> Jeremy, I hope you're doing well. Different Jeremy from in my office. Uh, a lot of people last week also wrote in, they want to see um, an episode with me and Jeremy. So maybe over the next couple of weeks, just tune in and I might get Jeremy back for us to have another, uh, another catch up. <laughs> uh, Kev, thanks for posting the Birch Feed link. Keep up the great work from Sam. Kane, okay, great to hear business is growing. You're creating jobs. Keep it up. Let's get the economy back on track. Kane, thanks a lot for pointing that out. Um, yeah, like as I was saying beforehand, all about job creation. Got lots of elderly, uh, lots of people that we support in different roles in our business. Everybody has something to bring to the table. So I really, you know, when I first started the business going back 11 years ago, um, you know, there was probably a bit of a cockiness of a Nathan, right? But I was more geeky back then, a bit less confident. Um, I was like, yeah, wow, I've done some cool stuff. And I used to talk about flashy cars and cash flow and having another plates and all that sort of stuff that, you know, I was cool that I had all these properties, right? But over time, it was something bigger than that. And, you know, the second thing I saw was the community that we've got. Third thing is the amazing people that, you know, sort of help support and, and make the whole thing happen. So, you know, when I get out of bed in the morning, I could literally go and not have to worry about any of it. I don't have to go and share information on the birch field. I don't have to go and, you know, get up and go to work and, you know, do anything for anyone. But, you know, why I do do that is that we've got really cool people in the community, really cool stories. You guys are what makes the community great. Um, really cool, you know, sort of stories where people are getting so from one to two to two to ten and ten plus i've had more people get to ten plus properties in 2020 than ever beforehand i wouldn't be able to deliver that outcome to the community if it wasn't for the good uh, team that i have behind me so there's a lot of people here from all different walks of life and all different ages and all different places that have come from all different sort of backgrounds to be able to deliver you those sort of uh, results so just a shout out to you know, everyone in, in the team and, and you know giving back as you know we're keeping it we've got our own little economy happening here so um, yeah it's cool um, any thoughts on Corio um, also getting loans on JobKeeper and early release of Super um, thoughts on Corio I'm not too sure on, on that I never heard of that one 
Um, also getting loans on JobKeeper and early release on Super. So uh, early release on Super, a lot of people went out there, they tried to pull their Super out early. It did affect their loans. Um, you know, it depends on your situation. If you wanna go get your money out of your Super, you gotta work out whether that's good for you or not. Um, I can see the pros and cons of doing so. However, you need to factor in all the other elements that may take part in making that decision. So instead of just going, oh, I've just got 10 grand out of my super, what will that 10 grand do for you? And is it worthwhile taking that out? And could it affect you and put you behind in a different uh, different capacity as well? Um, can you get loans on JobKeeper? Yes, uh, lots of people out there that are on JobKeeper and that are still getting uh, loans, so yeah. Um, Tracy, really interesting, and this is something that I forgot to say uh, beforehand. Um, I caught up with my, one of my mates uh, the other day uh, from news, and um, yes, the media, and um, I was having a couple of drinks. Yes, I didn't drink much water today. But I had a couple of drinks, had a bit of a catch up, talking about some cool stuff that I want to put out there in the media. I want to talk about this sort of stuff in the media. I'm hoping to be able to get that through. Um, and one of the um, one of the um, the things I wanted to talk about is every nation around the world for the last ten years, uh, front page of Australian newspapers, house prices unaffordable. Front page of the UK, house prices unaffordable. Front page of New Zealand, house prices unaffordable front page of the US, house prices unaffordable. Front page of a Kenyan newspaper, like literally this shit was in Kenya, right? House prices unaffordable. Philippines, house prices unaffordable, right? These are all headlines that were occurring pre-2016. 2016, they all stopped. Then, oh, is there gonna be a housing crash? That occurred in every single country. And now we've got corona in every single country's media. And now here we are talking about, you know, is there a boom, negative interest rates? They're all occurring. The same news appears in every single nation. How can this occur? We've got here Tracy from Auckland saying the market's going crazy. Multiple offers are being negotiated daily. The markets are hot out there. I can only talk for what I can see in the parts that I go into the country. I'm very, very active with what I purchase. As I said, I purchase like 100 deals a month, buying everything that's like, I'm getting everything that's on the, the sale out there. Um, and, and looking at the, um, the the offers, I've seen the same things out there all around the, the country. So um, in, in the markets I'm looking at, it's interesting to see that Auckland is going crazy as well. So um, yeah, really, really cool to see that um, because it's not all in my head. Um, Sunshine Coast is, is crazy. I'm seeing so many people move to Queensland. It's, it's insane. Uh, Frank OPT, I'll train you for uh, online for free. Uh, thanks for the offer, mate. And um, yeah, maybe I'll take you up on that. Maybe hit me up on uh, on um, Insta. I think I've got your messages on Insta. Just flick me and I'll do a shout out for you. Um, if Frank uh, frees PT online. Andrea, we bought two this year, four months apart, and our partner has gotten cold feet as he's concerned about debt, uh, but we have equity and could go a third mindset. It all comes down to the mindset. Um, you know, there's no, you know, let's win, win this race and let's run fast. It's what you feel comfortable with. Um, you know, sometimes partners are, you know, don't do it, do it. Someone's too, too excited, someone's too conservative. Um, you guys need to, have clarity and I think the greatest way for everyone being on the same page if you can get husband and wife um, on the same page um, got some common goals they both understand why they're trying to achieve this they look at the risks and do a SWOT analysis on you know the whole whole position look at it like a business look at like you know what could go right what could go wrong what are the potentials how will it help what will both of you get out of building the property portfolio um, and then once you have clarity on how to achieve that then you know a lot of that confusion disappears once you have clarity. Sam, sent you an email, mate. Thank you. I saw your email before we went live. I flagged it. I'll get back to you a little bit later. Uh, thanks for reaching out, mate. Phil, uh, Nathan, what is your view on the industrial warehouse market, particularly Sydney? That's a very interesting one, Phil. Um, there's not enough. There's not enough industrial. There's not enough 
sort of commercial places I was thinking about and talking about the other day actually about politics as well like the, some politicians talking about the um, talking about where and potentially how the need and where it may go for um, for more commercial zoning like we're seeing all these new housing estates are occurring uh, you know northwest Sydney southwest Sydney we're seeing all, all these new land subdivisions these new estates going in um, literally like thousands of homes in little 300 200 square blocks it's like people sometimes building themselves their own little prison but there's nowhere for them to go to work there's all these new housing being built but not new uh, commercial pro properties being built so um, do I think there's going to be a crash in the commercial market it's not my game um, I think some areas will be shaken up I think the market will just you know find its own level you put your hand in the cup of water the water rises the water will always find its own level I don't know why I'm putting my fingers in my cup of water yeah, I actually do feel thirsty though parched um, but yeah looking at the need for it I think there's a big need for more commercial property in uh, in Sydney Nora yes to birch feed uh, thanks for the, the, the vote of confidence Nori I know that we're very uh, much aligned as uh, a thought process so thanks for the, the endorsement there uh, Tracy if the virus is so dangerous why do they need to test you to see if you have it surely if it's so bad you won't need a test quick exactly why I keep questioning um, looking at the uh, the virus I still remember when all those videos came out people dying on the streets where are all the dead people I'm not seeing any of that right it's not happening out there so yeah um, seems a bit of a, a fizzer for me um, Adrian what do you think of the Gold Coast property market uh, I talked about beforehand I think the Gold Coast property market is very hot I'm a big fan of it um, I think there's a lot of upside for it you can pick up properties for 180 220,000 rent for 300 properties that I'm buying in the Gold Coast sort of between um, 180 to about 270,000 rent for 300 to 400 per week so yeah um, Corio in Victoria the beachside suburb I'm not that familiar with it sorry sorry about that one so um, yeah, I don't have the answer uh, on, on those ones and, and for uh, to to Geelong so uh, for me uh, a lot of people I actually had someone today ask me what do I think of Ballarat and I asked how much would a property in Ballarat cost and they said to me um, 200 to 250 for a house and I said what about a unit and they said like 120 130 grand I'm not familiar in that market but certainly for that sort of money I can buy in you know Brisbane Gold Coast Perth um, many different markets that are in capital cities rather than a regional area that's you know a, a long while out of a capital city so yeah um, Frank you have a good memory <laughs> yes I do have a, a, a good memory the nutrition I actually do eat quite well I just eat a lot of food nowadays and stuff like that so um, Vincent uh, I know uh, can you compare buying below market value property versus townhouse development I uh, hope you can share some advices on developments um, I don't do developments all that much uh, just because I want to own and control the asset I don't want to do a flip so my business isn't buying a property and selling it I'm accumulating right I'm a big fat whale that's what I'm so fat for now um, I'm, I'm a whale I, I, I like to go and pick up and accumulate assets because if we were to see a property boom tomorrow I want to take you know I could sell off let's say I've got 70 mil worth of property today I could sell off 20 pay out 20 mil worth of debt which I don't have I've got like 18 and a half but let's just call it that I'll have 50 mil worth of property but I'd rather see the 70 double to 140 than the 50 double to 100 if I took 10 mil when you use that to go buy a property sell it off take whatever the profit is I don't use dollars I don't that has probably actually that's a really I just learned something about myself just answering your question right I don't value money I don't value I don't have a value or a weighting on dollars right I want to have assets I don't even consider the dollars so what is your strategy about developing if you're gonna buy build sell or buy and build and keep it's a bit hard to buy build and keep given financing a market so yeah I'm about accumulating asset not about you know collecting fiat Ponzi scheme money that you know everybody is forced to use so 
Um, Phil, can we purchase uh, your property deals with our super? My understanding is super cannot borrow against equity. Uh, I cannot give super advice uh, as per you know our lovely authorities from the government. Uh, I can't talk about those things. However, uh, you know, I'm an opinionated guy that's got a lot of crazy views of the world and give you my thoughts on what I would do and what I've seen other people do, I can certainly do that. Um, you know, I've seen people buy lots of properties under their super. Uh, my understanding uh, of knowledge of the super fund market is that you can, yes, you can, people can borrow, but everybody's position is different. Um, you need to seek specialized advice on setting up a super fund. Um, there's a lot of compliance with inside that, but certainly uh, you can buy properties. Uh, probably each month I might buy sort of 10 or so properties in a, in a super fund. There's, there's properties that we buy in super funds for our investors um, that are out there. And um, yeah, you, people can buy that. So if you do need help, if you have got a super fund and you do want to shift it and protect it and take it out of, you know, a Ponzi scheme, roulette table sort of uh, environment, um, speak to someone that does specialize in that. I can put you in contact with those people. You can contact the offers. 1-300-367-925 or email us at admin at beinvested.com.au and can help you uh, out on that front. Um, so I've got a couple of um, messages on the phone which I'm going to read out. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll read these out. And Vincent, I saw, um, uh, I see your point on the current finance situation we're thinking about accumulating assets. Well, I'm all about just accumulating assets. It's my viewpoint on, on what I see out there. And um, certainly, yeah, like, yeah if, if there is people making money out of development. It's just not my game. My game is to accumulate the asset. Um, so yeah, I've uh, got a question here from Nate. Uh, tell me about your worst asbestos property experience and how you resolved it. Um, I've got lots of properties with asbestos in them. Asbestos occurs in any property before sort of 1990 or sort of class anything as asbestos. Um, yeah, asbestos left untouched is okay. Um, I haven't really had much. I've had some properties that have burnt down and fried asbestos. So when asbestos, asbestos doesn't, you know, once again, no health advice here, but asbestos isn't like, oh, uh, you know, you're gonna die because you're living in an asbestos house. Um, asbestos is when you get it into your lungs and it doesn't escape your lungs and it creates scar tissue from my limited non-doctor advice, um, but it's the particles from that. So if you have a property that burns down, uh, naturally all the particles of it just fly out and poison the dirt and everything like that. So I just spent about $50,000 clearing some properties that had uh, fried asbestos in them uh, due to a fire. But no stress, uh, insurance paid me for that and uh, I was able to do that. But yeah, I've never had any real big issues um, from asbestos uh, in a property. Uh, make sure that you've got all of your insurances in place uh, for public liability, and if something goes wrong, you're protected. So, yeah. Um, uh, hey, bitchy, birchy. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's cool. Uh, it's only one digit from a, a an R to a yeah, to all two digits from a R to a T. Hey, Birchie, what is the different? What is the lead time to find a property at the moment? Do you only buy an area serviced by property as I'm interstate and don't want to be involved in property management? Uh, thanks, Luke. Uh, Luke, um, I buy properties nationally. I buy them in all different locations. I don't talk about them public or where I buy them just because it's my own intellectual property. Um, and always make sure that I'm buying stuff which you know helps my investors build build wealth with their portfolio. Um, about eight times out of ten, um, I can help you with uh, with property management on the properties. Sometimes I can't. If I can't, I'll put you in contact with someone that we know and, and that in an area, in a local area that can help you on that front. So um, I I am actually taking Blink National. Uh, it's been something that's been in the works for a long time, just getting all the, the paperwork and everything sorted at the moment. So I will be in everybody's neighborhood from a, ma a property management perspective very shortly. Um, how long does it take me to find a property? Depends on one's requirement. Sometimes it could be a day, a week, a month, a couple of months, sometimes you know, six months uh, to find a property. So it just depends on your position and what you're trying to achieve um, and the types of assets that would fit in line with that. Uh, generally how I work uh, from a from a buyer's agency, so my role 
in, in my firm is to uh, locate and negotiate deals and help my investors sort of build their portfolio. So I work one-on-one -on -one with my investors to help them build wealth and different types of strategies to be able to achieve wealth uh, using property as the primary vehicle. Um, on that front, um, I sort of have people, some people that may have bought six months ago, they need to buy their second, third, fourth, fifth property. Um, I can only work with a certain amount of investors at any one time. Generally, it's around sort of like the 15 to 20. Sometimes I have a waiting list, so you need to go into a queue and, and wait. So I need to get the people at the top first that have been waiting the longest. Um, it could be a, a day, it could be a week, it could be a month. So yeah, um, but, but speak to my team. I, you know, everyone saw my team last week on here. Um, my investor relation managers are here to help you um, sort of yeah build that um, sort of uh, yeah get, get on board with everything. So. Uh, got here, um, let us out, sack Dan Andrews, uh, drove around Melbourne CBT today. Uh, I've seen a few people post this, interesting. If I was in Melbourne, I think I'd be in jail probably. Never contemplated thinking I'd ever go to jail, but if I was stuck in the prison down there, I'd probably be trying to get out. Um, so last couple of questions and then I'm leaving you all. Adrian, where do you find the properties on the Gold Coast we have uh, just sold and look for a new project. Are you talking about North Gold Coast area? I might contact your office. Adrian, reach out to my team. Uh, call my office, 1300 367 um, A couple of my, 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 my staff are, are in here. Um, so I think uh, I saw Kev um, and Gemma before and maybe Pat's in here and maybe Aaron. So I don't think Jeremy's on Facebook. Um, but have a chat with my team. Um, about you know how we can help you on that front. I purchase all over Australia. It doesn't matter little towns that people don't know about, little regions. People are like, oh really? I didn't know they're there. Um, but yeah, there's, there's pockets in Brisbane. Like I picked up a property in Brisbane the other day for sub 100. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's it's interesting what's out there. Um, Judy, if I become your client, I wanted to buy properties. What services do you offer uh, in the process? Um, so as at Be Invested, um, I help educate uh, investors on you know, all different areas of, of monetary policy. I don't talk to everyone about crazy stuff, but I just you know, try to cover off on a lot of stuff with my videos. Um, and I actually realized recently a lot of people don't know exactly what we do. So I run a buyer's agency, so I was like the, the third buyer's agency in the country, uh, been in business for 11 years. Back in the day, uh, no one knew what a buyer's agent was. Uh, now, on every corner, there's a buyer's agency. Uh, everyone's trying to be the next guru out there. Uh, but I think everyone can naturally see we're a little bit different how we build uh, wealth and, and portfolios for people. So I take a holistic approach on, on how to build those portfolios, just like I have done for myself and, and all those around me. A lot of my staff and my team are investors. If they're not investors, they're on the investing journey. Um, and looking at... Um, yeah, how we can help you like locate deals, negotiate the deals, and we have a, a law firm where we can help you, you know, manage the, the purchase and the, the, the legal transaction side of it. And I can help you out from accounting, uh, from finance, um, from management of the property. So, you know, anywhere on your journey, uh, you know, some people use this for some things, some people don't use it for others, some people use this for all of our services. Uh, all the, the brands uh, I've founded myself. Uh, own all the businesses um, so yeah like I've got the experts that I've found over the years that have helped me on my journey to build over 200 properties in my portfolio and have been a crucial part of my journey uh, and I provide them for you to be able to use at your disposal as well so when you know I put them out there uh, I have confidence in in the people because they've been the ones that have been able to provide uh, for my own personal results as well so if, I, if we can help you would love to be able to help you um, and be able to talk about your, your journey. I said I buy a lot of properties on a monthly basis and there's, it's very humbling to see um, you know, the amount of confidence and, and, and faith that you guys have in myself and my team to be able to deliver you the results and um, you know, seeing everyone grow and, and where they come from and where they get to is, is really humbling experience. So yeah, if we can help out, that'd be awesome. Um, Bevan, thanks for the help uh, from your property investor team. I'm a first-timer and got nearly three property underway within, with confidence. 
Kevin, really awesome to be at your um, at, 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 you know, at your uh, service uh, to be able to help you with your journey. And uh, Evan, it's really cool. Like three in three in a week. Right? That's that's like really cool. So everyone is hopping out, and I, I like how it's like sort of really community based, and people are sharing their their journey and their story and their notes, even in the, the comment section. So. Yeah, and, and also just one last thing because I, I, I feel like we're going to go very shortly um, just be careful like when, when you like our page and follow what we do there's a lot of dodgy people out there and they will see your comments sometimes and try and add you so just be careful you start seeing other sort of spruikers out there that are trying to spruik their services saying oh you're investing can we help you we do this we do that um, you know obviously they're not as you know, cool as me or have as much knowledge because they have to go and try and steal other people's uh, community so just be careful there's a lot of dodgy people out there in this space uh, I just say things as they are just be careful that people will try and add you and try and lure you into their little circle so um, on that note I've got a jet uh, Judy said thank you I've been following you for nearly 10 years watching currently uh, from Corfu <laughs> cool uh, I appreciate that and, and, and humbled to, to have have your following and, and being as a part of your education and, and, and you having confidence and not think that I'm a crazy guy over the years where I did seem a little bit crazy and still probably do. So uh, if, if I can help anyone out, uh, reach out to the office, one three hundred three six seven nine two five 367 925 or flick us an email at admin at beinvested.com.au. doesn't matter if it's working out your current debt arrangement, getting new debt, seeing what options there are on that front, building a property strategy, having a strategy session with myself. Uh, I do do uh, a strategy sessions called a map session, um, which is to work out a strategy for you. Um, space is very limited because it takes, you know, sort of like an hour of my time with you having a discussion and I can only fit a certain amount of hours into a day. And if you would like to book in one of them, speak to my team. Uh, maybe you could speak to them and not have to speak to me. Um, but we're all here to help you build um, your portfolio. Uh, when it comes down to a point of, you know, building that portfolio, you're dealing with myself um, from my you know, knowledge and research and, and the data that I collect to be able to help you build a strategy and a portfolio in line with your goals. So on that note, keep being awesome. Keep questioning everything that you see out there and uh, we'll catch up next week. Have a great time. Bye for now.